Hey guys, this is Drew with Akusha Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, we're going to be talking about a PCGS order that we just got back. It's right here. Got a whole bunch of co cool coins to show you. And uh, yeah, let's get this video started. So, the backstory on these coins is that uh, about four months ago, Tyler or Tylon, uh, he basically asked us to send some coins in for him via Econ, and we ended up sending a whole bunch in just like this. And we also have a few more uh, PCGS submissions coming back from him. And so he said we could film these and share them with you. And so I'm going to go through each coin today, show you uh, the flaws, imperfections, why I think a coin graded a certain way, and I hope this helps benefit you in terms of grading. And we're also going to be using the light box just so uh, you know I could talk about them hold you know hold a pencil up to each kind of imperfection so I hope this grading part of the video helps benefit you and uh, yeah let's get to some coins alrighty let's get started with some coins here so the first one start out is a 1964 Kennedy half dollar um, you can see the toning kind of almost a bullseye on the obverse I think these, this one was held in a frame with a few other coins. You're going to see that later in this video. But interesting kind of color to the coin. Maybe held in the PVC holder. I wasn't too sure. Um, but let me show you guys the next one. We're going to go through these a little bit quicker. Just so you guys can understand. Um, you know, and see as many coins as possible. This is a 1988 Denver uh, quarter. As you can see, it's kind of like a nice little crescent where Liberty and uh, the 88 is. And the rest is kind of clad toning. You're going to see that a lot on coins that have no silver content in them. Um, but still, kind of an interesting uh, modern type of coin. We're we'll going into a few Morgan dollars here. This is an 1881S. It has kind of like an electric eel looking toning to the bottom of the coin. And it has kind of like a, almost a terminal feel right up by the face. But, you know, decent little coin. A uh, few kind of spots on the reverse here that I, I'm not really a fan of, but Tylon wanted to send that one in. Here is an 1885O Morgan dollar. Nice little blast white obverse. You know, I, I didn't think it had a shot at 65, but you know, getting in a 64 holder paying econ is not too bad. Got a little toning on uh, the reverse, suppressing a little bit of the uh, luster on the coin. We got a details coin here. This is an 1881S Morgan Dollar. Uh, great environmental damage unk details. And the main reason why this occurred right here is I think someone kept a roll together. And the way they did that was they put a rubber band over uh, the end of the roll. And over time, you know, with heat and the temperature and everything that was going on, that rubber band left an imprint on the obverse. It got so kind of deep into the coin that they said, hey, we're going to have to label this one environmental damage and that is exactly what they did which kind of sucks but that's just the way it goes sometimes you pass those sometimes you don't here is another uh, Morgan dollar slightly toned 1887 the luster is kind of suppressed on the obverse here and you flip it over it's kind of got that same little story nice little blue to the top of the uh, to the top of the coin here right above the eagle you know just uh a lot of common common kind of uh, coins, but when you're sending stuff through Econ, sometimes that'll uh, make up for it in the end, make you a nice little profit. Here's an 1887 Morgan Dollar, great MS64 by PCGS. The reason why this one probably got that great is because the strike in the hair is a little weak, and the luster is very suppressed, and there's a few underlying uh, hits and some haze. But overall, look at the cheek there. It's very clean. Uh, nothing wrong with that. Got some nice kind of luster on the reverse here, but most of the time when they're grading your coin, they're going to be looking at the obverse that, to carry most of the grade. So that's kind of where they left that coin at. Highest grade Morgan of the whole sub. This is an 1885O Morgan dollar rated MS65. We were talking about luster on the previous coin as an issue. This luster on this coin is a lot better, even though this kind of has a, a dark or dingy type of uh, color to the coin. Even the strike is a little bit better, even for an omen, which is actually surprising. That's kind of why they probably gave it that gem state grade. When you flip it over, nice little, uh, you know, nice little contrast in the fields and the details there, and it has a nice little rim toning there. So, 
you know, pretty decent coin. That's a nice one for you, Tyler. Congratulations. He also sent in a few Tidy House coins. This is an 1886 Morgan dollar. Uh, I'm guessing that this coin was clean before it was placed in that in that uh, in that Tidy House holder. And as you can tell, there's this unnatural kind of blue and green here, and the red. That's kind of natural there, but right here is the probably the main target issue. And uh, you know, I think someone cleaned the hair or something. And then when you know nature struck, it did its course. I do think the obverse is fine, um, but you know it's it's a nice coin. Sad it got that grade, but that's just the way it goes. I kind of was seeing that that was probably what expected for that coin. Are you guys enjoying today's video so far? If you are, please hit that like button. It helps uh, just share our YouTube channel to more uh, collectors, young numismatists, and coin dealers. If you guys want to tell me what your favorite coin of the video is so far, comment that down below as well. And subscribe if you're new. But let's get back to today's video. 1964 Washington Quarter. So I'm guessing this one was also in the frame, but it was clean before putting in the frame. So the color didn't push it over the edge. Um, it was mainly probably that it was dipped in some capacity. This one almost looks like a proof when you look at it. But I do think that this coin may have been dip, uh, dipped or some type of kind of, I don't know, some type of issue that, that was in the field. Maybe someone uh, polished it. I think the polish might have um, messed with the look of the coin. Yeah, that might be the issue. I think polishing with this coin was a problem. And that's kind of what made them leave it unk details. Uh, you know, back-to-back -back problem coins here. But this is a 1922 Denver uh, Peace Dollar. Has a little bit of toning on it, and I'm trying to look for the wheel mark. So the way that you can look, really look for a wheel mark is that if you kind of pivot it to the side, and there's going to be kind of like a striation of lines on on the high point. Let me see if I can find this one. Okay, I found it. So you see this? I'm going to zoom it in real quick. Right there. So we have all these lines going this way. It's a wheel mark. Happened at the mint and that was a main issue for the coins. They normally kind of pivot it in all those different angles just to check on it, but yeah, all those lines there are considered a wheel mark, and that's why it got a details grade. Just something for you guys to look at, understand before you send in some coins. Tyler asked, asked me to look over these coins before I sent them in, and that one did even fly by me, which is interesting. So, 1878S Morgan Dollar. Kind of has some gunky looking toning by the date, but has some interesting rim toning here. Now, uh, when you take a look at the coin, it's very lackluster. It just doesn't possess, uh, you know, MS63 or higher in terms of just the luster itself. That's something that I that you have to kind of pick up on over time. Like, and the reverse is the same way. Very suppressed. Still has some kind of toning on the rim there, and that's where most of the luster is carried. But right there, really lackluster and kind of filling in the center here is lackluster as well. Okay, so we have a 1958 Proof, uh, Proof Franklin Half. This one has kind of some rainbow toning, but with these LED lights, you can't really see it. But overall, nice cameo on the coin. You do see a spot right here that would hold it back from a cameo. Um, and I don't, just don't know if it has enough contrast. I'm not good with grading these types of coins. That's just going to be my, my honesty coming out. But still, interesting coin. A few kind of spots, though, that would take away from that, that grade that somebody might be looking for. I think Cameo with a little bit later date sometimes is a little bit better. Here's another Tidy House, I believe. This is 1885 Morgan Dollar. Great MS62. We got a little weak strike here or some rubbing. Uh, we also have some kind of lackluster here on the face. Uh, the rubbing really just took away from the grade itself and the lackluster. But the cool part about this coin is that it has some nice toning on the reverse here. You do see some fingerprints, which does take away from the grade and does take it away from CAC most times. So just watch out for that when you're sending stuff in. That's going to be contributing to the grade of the piece. So, a little bummer here. This is, a, this is a trade dollar. It's a CC trade dollar, actually. I told Tyler on this one had a shot at being fake, 1873 CC. Uh, when I felt it in hand, the rims were very sharp, 
and it felt really fake. You can actually feel coins and tell if they're fake or not. I'm just used to it, but that's uh, what happened with that coin. Very tough because it's probably the most expensive coin of the whole batch. Another tidy house coin here. I'm thinking it's the same exact issue. Someone used something to either smooth the surfaces or clean the coin, um, or they kind of rushed the toning. I think that's what they're trying to say here, that they rushed the toning, questionable color. I don't think there's anything that really took away from the grade, but they just couldn't verify where the color came from. It's something that you normally don't see. And for anyone that's trying to see if, and understand if a toning's natural, if you guys have blue and red back to back, you really should stray away from coins like that unless they're obviously natural, and that's in cases very few times. But these two right here is where you're probably gonna have to avoid when sending stuff in. Nice blast white reverse here. But yeah, definitely questionable. Uh, but the Tidy House sometimes is kind of finicky. Sometimes they accept Tidy House stuff. I labeled the stuff Tidy House, and they said, okay, well, we're, we're just great like every other coin. I don't, you know, so they took everything with a grain of salt and still kind of gave those the grade that they thought they deserved. 1900 Morgan dollar, uh, lackluster here, but I mean, the surfaces are very clean. You don't see any hits in the fields here. Strikes pretty decent, a few kind of hits in the hair, but not very much rubbing on the coin, which is pretty nice. Flip over the coin, has kind of like a nice purple hue to it. Very, uh, very pleased that this one's straight graded. I didn't think this one had enough for 65, just based on the luster. And luster does have a lot to play sometimes when you're getting that gem state grade. Let's take a look at the next coin here. This is at 1881S, and this is exactly what I was talking about. The luster on this coin is a lot better. Uh, Problem-free surfaces here. Uh, there is some points where you don't see luster on the coin, but overall, still an interesting piece. There are a few fingerprints on the coin, as you can see. I think there's some fingerprints in the fields here. Um, but still, I mean, it has some kind of interesting rim toning to the coin. I think this is considered an envelope toner. So this one sat kind of in an envelope, and over time, they received that. And I think that one was accurately graded, in my opinion. The last one I want to show you from this batch here is an 1884 Morgan dollar. has some rainbows in the fields here, but as you can see, it is a New Orleans mint. Strike is going to be weaker, and the strike on the hair is very bad, also on the ear. And there's some rubbing, really hard rubbing on the, uh, on the face. But luster is a little lacking as well. And you're kind of missing some tone, you're missing some uh, luster in the fields. But still a beautiful coin at the end of the day. Do like the color on the reverse. Um, strike is very weak on the reverse, as you can tell as well. So that's sometimes where they're going to find strike and understand if it's strike or circulation. Uh, this one kind of it has that uh, you know weak breast, but you know a few fingerprints here as well. Nice little color, not a bad coin. All right, let's get to the next box. All right, so up next is an 1881s Morgan dollar, grade MS62, and as you can tell, there's kind of a striation here, right underneath the chin. Overall, very clean cheek. There is some rubbing here on uh, the cheek. There also is some rubbing in the hair here. Uh, but overall, luster is pretty nice. I like the luster on the coin. I do think this coin may have, could have gotten a 63, but that's just the way it goes. Sometimes we don't agree on every coin. And uh, yeah, still a pretty nice coin. Can't go wrong with that. Here's the next coin that we have. Uh, this is an 1884-0 Morgan dollar. Weaker strike, as you can see in the hair. Strong cheek here. There is kind of a little scratch on the coin, but uh, still has some nice color on the rim here. And when you flip over the coin, the high point is pretty nice. It's probably what carried it a little bit. And you still got some nice toning. I think there may be a few fingerprints on the coin in the fields, but you know, that's probably where the 63 is coming from. And basically, what we're trying to talk about in this video is distinguishing what's the difference between MS62, 63, 64 and 65 and also talking about some off the wall coins that we we, we uh, ended up submitting for Tyler stuff that's not Morgan's that are like Kennedy's like this so off the bat you can tell very lackluster surfaces and uh, there's some fingerprints on in the fields here but as you can tell there's not a lot of uh, issues on the coin 
most of the time when you find rubbing on a Kennedy, it's going to be right up here in the hair or right on uh, the front of the cheek. Uh, when you flip over the coin, you know, still beautiful surfaces here that kind of carry the coin. A lot of the hits that you're going to find on a mint state coin is the shield for the Kennedy. Something for you guys to understand when you're grading these. You're going to need that luster, though, to get it to a gem state. Um, it's that one just didn't get it because of that luster. Up next is 1946 S, uh, Roosevelt Dime. You can tell there's some nice color, almost like an aqua color on the obverse of the coin here. It's going to be hard to tell exactly where they thought this was a problem. Um, you know, strong kind of strike. Um, I don't see too many issues on the obverse. When you flip it over, there's a few kind of dings in uh, the torch. But yeah, I might need to look at this one a little bit later and see what their thinking was. Oh, uh, no, I think it's still, still a pretty nice coin. Kind of hard to gauge on this one. It might be a little softer of a strike maybe. You can see right in the hair here, that might be the problem. I'm not good with rosies too much, so that's something that I have to have to understand. It did receive a, a, a uh, I'm sorry, yeah, it did receive full bands, so that's kind of, uh, the strike on the reverse was pretty nice, but maybe the obverse was lacking a little bit. I thought the luster was pretty strong, but it's just the way it goes. So, okay, another problem coin here. This is 1964 Washington Quarter. Same kind of story as the previous one. May have been polished before for going in. And you can just tell by this cheek here that that's just probably not natural, especially if there's toning over it. Um, yeah, that might might be the problem. But the Kennedy did pass, but these two didn't, so that's kind of interesting. Uh, but once again, I think this is from a frame. Another problem coin. Dang it. So, sad story on this one. 1879S, Morgan Dollar, graded, uh, you know, unk details cleaned. And when you kind of look in the fields here, I do think there's maybe some hairlines on the coin in the front of the face here. And that might be taking it away from the grade. That's basically all I could think about. Hairlines on the coin. Most of the time you might find those, especially with ones that feel like they're early die, die states, like this one. But there's kind of like these kind of spinny looking lines. A lot of them go this way, and then a lot of them go that way. And when you kind of go in the light here, you see like all those little lines sticking out. That's very unfortunate, but that's just something that is rolled a dice, right? So your perception of hairlines and what's permissible is your definition. But when you send it into them, they might have a different one. So, flip over the coin here. There is some kind of uh, kind of haze here on the on the reverse, but overall, I don't see too many problems. No hairlines or anything whatsoever. So, very difficult to see that come back as unk details. Sucks for Tylon, but learning moment for sure. I think it's just I think that one was definitely a toss up. So going back to the omen here, strike is pretty decent, a little lackluster. Still has some nice color in uh, in the top of the coin here, but not attractive toning. Does take away from the grade sometimes, and doesn't help the grade. So when we were talking about beautifully toned coins and ugly toned coins, sometimes coins may feel unattractive, and that's what sometimes where a grader would say that's a problem. The reverse has some nice luster. Do see a few kind of fine hits in the fields here. This one looks like a reed from a coin, and a few kind of spots there. But overall, nice little uh, reverse. It did come back mint state 64, so that's pretty good. But when you're seeing a lot of 65 coins, you're gonna have to see a coin like that. But like I'm saying, the obverse is gonna have to have some pretty nice luster. Uh, let's take a look at this one. So. We're taking a look at this one. Not sure why it didn't proof like, um, but there is there is kind of a test that you would use. So there's a four there's a four inch test of 12 point font away for proof like, and this one I guess did not pass that test. When we're taking a look at the obverse here, um, what where, where could we have gone wrong? So we see a lot of chatter out in the fields, all kind of bunched together um, at the top of the head and also at the bottom of the neck. Um, yeah, the color is still pretty nice. There's a little bit of rim toning on it. When you flip it over, yeah, I think the luster is still pretty cool and, and uh, interesting. But I don't see this one. I think might have been a toss-up between a 64 and a 65. 
I'm not sure what what their opinion was on it, but I did think this one had a shot at 65. Maybe they thought the strike was a little tad weak right above the head here. Um, and it is an omen coin, so that's something to consider as well. I do think they might have dropped the ball on this one. Might have might be a 65 at the end of the day. That's just my opinion. Let's see what we got here next. So 19010. Uh, unattracted toning on the obverse. Still a pretty nice coin. Luster still kind of present. Do see kind of some striations right here. Maybe from a coin or something else. Taking away from that. It's kind of giving like a little sheen. There are a few kind of hits on the uh, on the face. Strike looks a little bit of a problem here. Especially towards the top of the head. Got some fingerprints also to the left of the coin. Now when you flip it over. Luster still carrying pretty well. The strike on the on the obverse wasn't too bad, but on the reverse, uh, the breast feathers are looking a little weak, and that's something that you, we should uh, understand about the coin. You know, when you're trying to, uh, so there's a strike on the obverse, strike on the reverse, and most of the time you're either going to have a problem on the obverse or the reverse, especially with New Orleans Mint coins, and that's just something you can expect. So when you get one with a strong strike on both sides, that's a really good sign. So 1956 Kennedy, I'm sorry, Franklin half dollar. Do see some kind of rubbing, as you can see right on the cheek. That's where you're going to see a lot of these. Right in the front of the cheek is where a lot of uh, Kennedys and Franklins have their highest point. I do think this one deserves a little bit of a better grade. I think I thought it was at least 66, but it did 65. Let's see if we can spot out where that problem may be. Hmm. So don't see any big scratches. Do see some more rubbing here. I think the strike was just a tad weak on... Uh, on the coin itself and that did not get a full bell lines there I think there's just right here is the main problem area but still pretty nice luster on the coin surprised it didn't do well I thought at least 66 didn't think it would uh, didn't think it probably would full bell lines but that's just the way it goes man it's just the way it goes a little bit of a better date here 1891 Morgan dollar Nice obverse blast white surfaces. Strike looks a tad weak as you can see in the hair. Cheek is very nice. Fingerprint right down here by the stars. That's going to take away from the coin. There is a little bit of a sheen look here. We'll take a look at the reverse. I think there's a few more kind of fingerprints in the fields. Nice little, uh, you know, nice little purple hue to it. Give it a little character. Sometimes that's exactly what you need. Just a little character to... Uh, Push it over the edge, get somebody interested. So here is a 1949 Washington Quarter, created MS66 by PCGS. Don't really know too uh, too much about grading these, but let's just spot out some things that we might have problems with. So you can see on the cheek right here, a little bit of rubbing or a weak strike, two kind of hits right on the face, and a little bit of chatter in the fields. Some nice looking color on the rim of the coin. Can't go wrong with that. A few more hits right here, but still, pretty phenomenal piece. Happy it did it as well as it did. Let's check out the reverse. So you check out the reverse here. Luster's a little bit weak. Do have a hit right next to uh, the lettering above the eagle. And uh, yeah, I think this one, just based on the issues kind of on the, in, in the fields, and it looks like to be, uh, when you kind of pivot it a little bit, a little bit of a coin roll right here. You can see that little dot. And that's going to really push it back. A lot of the issues that you're going to see on coins, especially when it's coin to coin problems, are going to be on the high points of Washington. Um, and so that's where that problem came to roost. And it, that one was a little bit of a coin flip between 66 and 67, I'm sure. But just that took away from the coin for sure. So we have uh, an 1886 Morgan Dollar grade MS64 Plus. Luster is definitely gem state. We were talking about that earlier, but what really held it back from uh, MS65? When you see damage all in the same kind of area here, this is a read from a different coin. That in it alone took it from an MS65 example down to MS64. Look at the strike, very strong, very present. A few kind of, uh, you know, a few kind of scuffs here on the face, but that's something that really doesn't take away from the coin. Flip over the coin. Very clean looking reverse. You're going to kind of see a little chatter above In God We Trust. And that's just something that's expected with a lot of Morgan Dollars have that. 
All right, so now up next, 1887 Warren dollar. We do see some haze um, when you're taking a look uh, between L and U all the way down here. Just a lot of haze on the coin, and there seems to be some rubbing right here on the cheek, and the strike is a little weak right here as well. So that's our main problems on the coin. As you can kind of see, there's a lot of chatter in the fields here. And when you flip over the coin, it's got some stronger luster on the reverse than the obverse. Still some haze you can see underneath the wings. and But there's a nice kind of colorful ray by $1. Very, very beautiful. This was probably because another Morgan was sitting right on top of this one, either in a bag or somewhere else. And then over time, this one received that toning. All righty. Another, another coin from a frame or a PCI holder. This is a 1964 Roosevelt dime. Nice little purple in the center here. Luster's pretty strong, but it's just not very beautiful toning, to be honest. You're not, you're not gonna want a lot of this in terms of just, it just takes away from the eye appeal for some collectors, and that's kind of what PCGS is telling us as an opinion. It's not my opinion um, specifically, it's just what they think. Uh, when you see the color here, that's pretty nice. I thought it was a pretty interesting coin. And I hope this one does well for Tyler. If you guys want to see some coins from Tyler, make sure to go check out his YouTube channel. We'll have that down below. I'm sure he'll be offering a lot of these on his Instagram. Maybe making a website. That'd be pretty cool. Up next, 1904 V-Nickel. Good uh, AU55. And so, what's the main problems on this coin? So we take a look here. There's some circulation, as you can tell, on the face and the nose. And there's some circulation on the high points here. Uh, Luster is still pretty nice for AU. Still has some nice detail. Has some color on the coin as well. And when you flip it over, has some kind of, kind of hits, but there also is a little circulation possibly on the high points. Nice little blue hue to it, but it's also a few spotty issues. I think that's just uh, a part of the way that some of these are. I have a few coins that are even mint state with some spots, so that's just, uh, you know, over time. Just depends on where they were held. We got another Morgan dollar to show you guys. This is 1883-0, New Orleans. A little bit of a softer strike, as you can tell. So there's a softer strike here, and it's going all the way up through uh, the hair. Just kind of little areas, and it, those spots are kind of missing the toning. This one may be an envelope, envelope toner. So that's just something you should consider. We got some rubbing here on the face. That's that's the way it goes. We're missing a little bit of luster in front of the face here as well. Nice little uh, green and blue color. Flipping over the coin, giant hit on the eagle. Strikes a little bit weak. You can see that the strike's intact for the most part down here, but when it starts to go to the bottom part of the breast, it's just completely gone. But a little lackluster on the reverse here, which is a, is a problem. Still has some interesting color, but just understand when we're doing grading videos like this, we're doing this to help you guys. And most of the time when we get coins in that aren't the grades that we want or the grades that we do want, we're giving a reason why or why not that they are. So that's going to be something to, to help you. You have to be very, very, you have to scrutinize your coins a lot when sending them in because you don't want to spend that money on something that uh, won't, won't benefit you in the end. And you don't want to be disappointed when they get back. So, another Franklin proof. Got some kind of rainbow toning around the whole entire rim of the obverse. Don't think it would have gotten canned just because of this kind of little bit of uh, spottiness below the Y. Going all the way down almost to the T here. When you flip it over, a nice little cameo look to it. There is, uh, I don't think there's too many spots on here. Once again, I'm not good at determining cameo, so that's something that I'm going to have to learn over time, and that's something that I want to be honest with you guys about. Here's the last coin of this box. This is a 1962 uh, Washington Quarter, great MS-65. Toning itself, I would say, is just not very beautiful. We got a hit here, um, you know, a little coin read. We also have a little bit of rubbing, as you can see on the head. That's just something that, uh, you know, is a part of life. We got a few kind of dings down here. And that's just, uh, you know, still pretty nice little toned 
Washington quarter. Do like the reverse a lot more. It is a lot of lackluster. Has a kind of big hit right here on the Eagles wing. And I think it's going all the way into the breast. And that's probably the major issue for this coin. A lot of these hits on the reverse here. Up by uh, the shoulder. Two on the, uh, on the breast feathers. And that damage is going all the way from over there. Some coin really wanted, didn't like this coin and wanted it to suffer. And uh, yeah, still pretty nice coin. Enjoy that one a lot. And let's go to the last box of the video. All right, let's show you the last bit of coins here. These are the ones that interested me the most. Up first, nice 1916 Mercury Dime. Has a little bit of a dark toning here, but overall surface is very clean and the strike is pretty strong. Uh, I do think it's just a beautiful coin. Nothing to complain about with this one for sure. Has an interesting kind of green hue to the reverse. Very happy with this one. Do like this one a lot. And I hope uh, Tyler likes this one as well. Maybe I'll get that one from him. We'll see how it goes. Up next, another favorite of mine, 1902. Barber Quarter. Um, there's a little bit of weakness on the face here. Um, you can see just kind of a softer rub. But overall... Problem free surfaces, a little bit lackluster, we need a little bit stronger luster for that, you know, close to gem state. When you take a look at the reverse, I think it's just a lot lot nicer looking reverse. Has some kind of uh, toning on the on the coin, but a little bit of spottiness as well. I do like it very much. Alrighty, up next is uh, 1885 seated dime with some nice kind of toning to the coin. I do like this one a lot. Let's see where we would see some circulation though. That's something that we have to pick up on. Okay, so that's right away you're gonna see it. Uh, right on the face here, right on the head, you can kind of see some, almost like a gray. And it's almost like a rub, very deep rub. And that's something that would take it from AU58 to AU55. Also see some rubbing on the breasts here and down by the foot. That's, uh, you know, those are dead giveaways for sure. And let's flip it over and take a look at that. Okay, so see some nice kind of bullseye toning the coin. This side's still pretty nice. Not too many problems with it. And I do like this coin a lot. Has some just interest to it. A little bit of color. Also, um, you know, it is a circulated gray. That's just the way it goes. But, I mean, I just think it's a pretty coin. Here's the next one that I thought was interesting. This is a 1932 Washington Quarter. And it's... You know, from, from the naked eye, you can see it's pretty circulated. So, got circulation here, which is the main issue. Also, circulation on just the rest of the high points. Got a few scuffs. Um, you can even see some rubbing in God We Trust. But it has some nice kind of color to it. And I do like it a lot. But I think the main problem is when we flip over the coin, you can see there's just a lot of, a lot of circulation on the eagle here whole lot but this one was actually held in with some tape that's why I like this coin a lot just has something that separates it from the rest of the Washington quarters I don't know I thought it was pretty cool we'll see if Tyler lets me keep this one or not keep it but pick it up from I think it's pretty nice even though it's an AU kind of common uh, Washington quarter it does have some cool appeal to it up next which I thought was another pretty cool one a little bit of lackluster uh, you could see the strike is a little bit weak but Actually, it's not lackluster, but the strike is pretty weak. But there is some kind of lacking luster on the face here. The fields are still pretty nice. Color I like a lot. And yeah, I mean, I think it's just a, a very exemplary Larry coin. Yep, that's what I said. I'm going to say it again. No, I'm not. Okay, so we have some luster here that's very strong on the reverse. Taking a look, there's a few kind of, uh, just a little bit of slide. You know, it's just the way it is. But... I think what held it from that 65 grade was kind of the issues you can see right here and a little bit of touching on the face but you know that kind of that cheek sometimes gets the, gets the brunt of stuff but still pretty cool coin do like that one has a little bit of rainbow touch to it so here's a date that's a little bit tougher for toning I think this one was a part of the tidy house group as well 1881 MS63 do see some kind of uh, some striations right here also in front of the face Kind of a huge ding right here. You can see that dot. Luster though, still pretty nice. Got a weak strike here on the hair. That's to be expected. 
take a flip over here and uh, you know got some got some hit, hit issues right above and below and God we trust and some pretty major fingerprints some guy literally thumb this sucker I mean this is the definition of thumbing a coin thumbed both sides I just think it's interesting I don't really care um, you know that's just the way it goes but I do think those those uh, fingerprints did have a big contributing uh, factor to the 63 grade on that coin next coin that we're showing off is an 1888 oh a little bit of a tougher date for toning as you can see here there's a lot of hits all the way down the high points here and we have kind of a weak strike there's a strong I think it's a little bit better of a strike here but when you get to the top of the hair it's just all of that's pretty weak and you know once again guys omens are gonna have that weak strike so look for ones with better strike and a better grade because sometimes you know omens with 66 67 grade are gonna be a lot better you do see a nice bullseye toning um, you know as it really adds to the eye appeal of the coin I do like it a lot when you flip it over it has the same type of story here soft strike on the breast feathers but still pretty cool bullseye toning very happy for him on this one just a nice stunner for sure okay a little bit of a better date this is an 1894 O Morgan dollar uh, intense circulation on the high points and on the cheek there are some big hits here which probably held it from an AU just some really hard hits uh, might have had some old cleaning on the coin I'm not too sure itself but as you can see I think look just all the circulation you know high point a little bit on the Eagles head you even see some scratches on uh, the wings and I think someone has a fingerprint here, but overall, really circulated, but nicely circulated reverse. Do like this one just because it's a little bit of a better date. Gets to you to fill a hole, and you don't have to spend so much money to get there. Up next, a nice little Pleasant 79S, great MS64 by PCGS. So, we're going to take a look at this coin. Has some nice toning, but there are some fingerprints. And the toning's just kind of spotty. Got another huge set of fingerprints down here. That's going to take away from the coin. Fingerprint on the face. Sometimes I think it just adds kind of interesting character to the coin. Gives it a story, but for grading purposes, understand that's going to take away from the grade of the coin. Pretty strong, uh, pretty strong cheek here. Little scratch on the nose and on the right underneath the eyelid. But still a pretty cool coin for sure. Take a look at the reverse here. Luster is very weak in the center of the coin. The rest of the luster on the coin is still pretty nice. Um, you know, it still has a lot of fingerprints. Someone handled this coin a lot before it started to tone, and that's just the way it goes. It does help you understand, though, grades and why not to fingerprint coins. Last coin of the video. Actually, an interesting piece. This is a 1831 with a planchet flaw, XF details. And when you zoom in on the coin, it does that planchet flaw really does stick out for itself. It's just a mint, mint damage. We thought it was pretty interesting, so Tylon, we thought, heck, why not submit it? Do see some circulation on the wings here pretty extensively on the, on the head as well. And uh, some nice color on the coin. I do like that a lot. The reverse is uh, pretty cool, but the obverse I'm not too a fan of. You can see a lot of, you know, a lot of crud here. And uh, it does have a few kind of lines in the front of the face and behind the head, but that's just to be expected. Got some interesting color though, for sure. And yeah, I think it's just a nice, stunning example. Very happy for him. I think there's a little bit of a rim ding here, but that's kind of what it contributed to that XF. And basically, when they're talking about details coins, the reason why they give it a details grade to begin with is because graders cannot come to a consensus on the grade that it deserves. So say if, it, if it's an AU grade, one grader says it's an AU50, one says it's an AU55, one says it's an AU58, and there's no way that they can come to an agreement. That is when they would call it AU details. So understand that from the beginning of a coin, people just don't think that it deserves a grade because they can't come to a consensus. But thank you guys for watching this part of the video. Let's cut it to the outro. Hey, thank you guys for watching today's video. If you guys like this video, please hit the like button down below. If you guys wanna tell me what your favorite part of the video was, are you guys getting into grading? How, how are you guys doing it? Just give us a backstory on uh, kind of your walk with PCGS. Be interesting to read. 
and subscribe if you're new. I mean, we're, we're, we're getting close to 2,500 subscribers and we couldn't be more excited, but we will see you guys in the next video.